Hi, folks. Welcome to Crisco's Corner. Hi, folks. Welcome back. The Daily Wire. Former Twitter CEO Jack Dorsey claims he witnessed incident where CNN tried to falsify news. Now, they're going to go on and talk about, I'll tell you the truth, CNN's one of the worst. But this has been going on in journalism forever. Give me an idea. You see some of the pictures of the famous battlefields of the end does or did. I'm just saying is you'll get to a certain few garbage reporters or photographers, and they try to get the best picture possible to sell the most newspapers in that case, and in this case, the most clicks and views. But I think this story is going to be more about the fact that is Jack Dorsey having a, a twang of conscience? Sometimes I say yes, and sometimes I say no. And I really don't believe him. Uh, he's maybe exposing Twitter for what it really is in his own way, but it's not, it's not exuding confidence in the fact that he's still technically on the board and he's still, uh, you know, a shareholder, a pretty good amount, but not the most. I think he's like number fifth or sixth or something like that. as far as shareholders go, uh, before we get into the story, I'm getting pretty much channel banned here on YouTube. Even saying that word probably screws this video for the algorithm. And that's also part of the point, Twitter and their algorithm and how they suppress people. Well, YouTube does the same thing. And the way to get around it is this. Please post a comment in the comment section, whether it be, hi, John, a nice story, how's it going, you know, anything to get the traffic flow in the comments. And also, if you could give it a like and share this video link with as many people as you possibly can to help get around the, the algorithm that's got basically their foot on my neck. And that's the way we can get content out. Let's read on. Former Twitter CEO Jake Dorsey said on Monday evening that he knows that CNN promotes fake news reporting because he witnessed the far left network try to cause conflict during the Ferguson, Missouri riots back in 2014. Yeah, I remember, <laughs> I think it was the CNN guy. They were standing in front of the huge building that was burning, talking about mostly peaceful protests. <laughs> I remember that, idiot. Darcy made the revelation in response to a tweet from Miss Universe Iraq, 2017 Sarah Abdali Aydin, who said even CNN sometimes sell fake news. I know there's some covering Iraq's event in 2019. People need to understand every media is prone to either mistakes or deliberate corruption. Do your own investigation before believing what they're selling you. I think that's a fair, fair assessment on everybody, including Fox, which I watch a lot. Dorsey responded, I know this from being on the streets of Ferguson during the protests and people were chanting FCNN. All right, fine. Uh, you get Jack, are you getting a twins, twins of conscience? You said you were against what the board of Twitter did to the uh, potential buying of Twitter for, me, for, for Mila Musk, but then again, you voted for the poison pill alternative when the board voted. So I don't know. Are you a hypocrite? Uh are you doing this in your own way? I can't tell. He didn't tweet stem from an early remark that Dorsey made the platform and called out CNN's Brian Stelter in a column this for the Washington Post on Monday over a tweet that took aim at Fox News host Tucker Carlson. Yeah, that's their target, man. Dorsey referred referenced a tweet from Stelter that said Tucker Carlson is always selling the same thing. He's selling doubt. Dorsey responded to the tweet by, ask, by asking in a tweet, and you're selling hope? <laughs> Liz Aspires, a leftist that appears on MSNBC, responded to Dorsey writing, they're selling truth, which is hope agnostic. It's supposed to inform you, not make you feel some kind of way. That's absolute bullshit. Elizabeth, you lie. Either that or you're a brainwashed cult member. They do make people feel a certain way on purpose. Look at the four or five years they went after Trump. 
Look at all the things they did. The Hunter Biden laptop being hid from most 45% of the American people who did not know about the Hunter Biden laptop when polled after the 2020 election. Unbelievable. Dorsey made news over the weekend when he slammed the Twitter board of, of directors as Altman or Elon Musk, the world's richest man, tried to take over the company. Dorsey responded to the following tweet when he made his remark, if looking at the history of Twitter board, it's intriguing as I witness on its early beginnings, mired in plots and coups, and particularly amongst Twitter's founding members, I wish they could make that into a Hollywood thriller one day. Dorsey responded, it's consistently been the dysfunction of the company. Dorsey also said big facts in response to the following statement from venture capitalist Fred Dustin. What I do know for sure is this old Silicon Valley proverb is grounded in old age wisdom that still applies today. Good boards don't create good companies, but a bad board can kill a company every time. When later asked if he was allowed to speak like this publicly, given the fact he's still on the company board, Dorsey responded no. Now he's trying, and he went out and said what we did concerning the Hunter Biden laptop if he just a few weeks ago said that was wrong and we shouldn't have done it. We knew it wasn't Russian misinformation. We knew it was a real story, but we squashed it anyway. It's, it, it's, it's like... It's it's like somebody, uh, some evil regime, and you'll get a person that will come out and say the things we did and said were really, really, truly wrong, and we're sorry for them, and I'm going to point that out. But then again, they turn around the next day and do the same things again, i.e. vote to keep Elon Musk from taking over the company. So, Jack, you know, are you, I know you have a tug of conscience. Maybe it's the fact that I'm sure you're set for life, of course, financially, no matter what happens. That if you come out too much, the stock will plummet and you'll be sued by shareholders. I really don't know. But I know for a fact that your company, Twitter, you're intimately involved in from its beginning, is dying. It's slowly dying. By its own hand, I might add. I mean, they've had videos from Tim Pool from 2019 when Tim was on Joe Rogan's show, well, I forgot her, uh, the lady's name that, was, that ran Twitter at the time, and Jack Dorsey were there. And they asked him straight out, and her, if somebody had, this is in 2019, mind you, if somebody had vaccine hesitancy, hesitancy would you ban them from the platform or delete their tweet? And she said no. It does not go against our terms of service. And then Tim proceeded to show example after example after example of how Twitter is biased, deletes tweets, bans people for their ideology, not what they said. And Jack said, yeah, that's, I'm paraphrasing, of course. It's problematic. I'll look into it. I don't know about that particular incident. Bullshit. Absolute bullshit. He knew. And so did, so did she. They all knew. It's about power and control. And here's the other fact that happens, and I hope Trump doesn't fall into this, and I'm still a big Trump supporter. These guys live in a bubble. They have, especially the Silicon Valley people. They have very little contact with the, what I call the real world, the everyday people in the world, the everyday things that go on. And they start to change over time that their their vision of what reality really is isn't true and i hope as trump because you get isolated as president even a former president trump 10 years ago could just walk into a restaurant with a couple of his friends and even his wife and sit down and order a meal he can't do that anymore he can't just walk down the street and start shooting a breeze with people i remember there was i think it was brian stelzer not Brian Stelter, excuse me, Brian Kilmeade. On Fox, I was walking down the street with Trump before he uh, ran for president in 2016. That they were asking people. He probably had some security around, I'm sure, but you didn't see him. He wasn't in a bubble. And I hope that isolation doesn't change Trump 
at all like it did these guys. The multi-billionaires, especially the high-tech guys, seem to have lost touch with real people reality. And they think the world is much different than it really and truly is. Is Jack having about a conscience? I don't know. I don't trust him. I don't trust him as far as I can throw him. I trust none of these Silicon Valley monsters. I don't trust Zuckerberg. I think he's, I think frankly he's evil, if you want to know the truth of it. All those millions of dollars they poured in beating Trump, now we find out that it's unlawful for them to do that. It's um, the Federal Election Commission ruled it. I believe it was a court judge. It might have been a trial. I'm not sure. Ruled that all those tens of millions and hundreds of millions they poured in to fortifying the election in 2020 was unlawful, the money they gave. Did Twitter do the same thing? I don't know. But they know they've been silencing certain individuals with certain ideologies for a very long time. And the ironic part to all that was Twitter was dying prior to Donald Trump announcing he was running for president the first time. It was dying. So are the mainstream media networks. Trump's involvement in running for president saved Twitter, CNN, MSNBC, and all the rest as their ratings skyrocketed. And then Twitter. And Jack, you were involved in this. I don't care who the hell you are, whether you're Barack Obama or you're Donald Trump. You banned the president of the United States from your platform. You're basically saying we are more powerful than the highest elected official in the most powerful and the richest country in the world. And there's nothing you can do about it. That's the power they had. And that's the power you wielded. And you decided to do it. Now, privately, you might have said amongst your board members, your inner circle, you know, this is a mistake. We shouldn't ban Donald Trump. Well, you know what, Jack? Grow a set of balls. I don't know what's happened to him. I don't know history of Jack Dorsey. I'm not the intimate details of how he grew up or where he came from, nor do I care. I know this guy wielded power, huge amounts of power and used it to push a political ideology and to keep the American people from voicing their opinion. Elon Musk was right when he said this. The First Amendment is sacrosanct. He's almost a First Amendment absolutist. And without a properly functioning First Amendment principle, this democracy, this republic of the United States is in peril of dying. Whether you want to hear your truth, my truth, the truth is the truth. And American people are smart enough to see all the information that's available and make the decision they think when they go to vote. But you took that away from them. And the major hit was the Hunter Biden laptop. 45% of people that didn't, that voted for Biden in the 2020 election did not know about the Hunter Biden laptop. I find that amazing in itself. But to add on to that, of the swing states of those same people that didn't know about the Hunter Biden laptop, once they found out after the fact, 9.4% of them said they wouldn't have voted for Joe Biden had they have known. That's millions of people. And that sways the election in the Republican slash Trump's favor. And you stood by, whether you were part of it or not, you stood by and did nothing. Very much like the defense at Nuremberg and a lot of the guards and a lot of the people who participated in some very evil stuff. Say, what could I do? I'm only one person. Or I was just following orders. 
Or what could I do? Because if I said anything, in this case, in Jack's case, they would push him out. So we said nothing. You know what? That makes you just as guilty. You're just as guilty. So all of a sudden now your mea culpa is, is supposed to convince people? I'm not buying it. We'll see in the next few weeks and months what he says and does. Maybe he'll convince me. But for right now, Jack, I think in my opinion, up until the last few weeks, you have been the enemy of this republic, and the enemy of this democracy, and the enemy of free speech. Until the next time, goodbye and good luck. Mm-hmm.